Hi, my name is Leila Takayama, and I'm a research scientist at Willow Garage, where I study human-robot interaction. Robots open up new kinds of questions about what it means to, say, perceive agency. Why is it that we seem to feel like these things are sort of alive, even though we rationally know that they're not? The field is growing, and as there are more personal robots coming out into the world, it's going to keep growing. And I think it's, it's really important that we understand that interaction, not just robotics and not just humans, but that space in between. Robots bring out things in humans that we really didn't expect that they would. I'm coming from a background that's more psychology and communication, so I'm a human sciences kind of person. I've seen it built, I've seen it taken apart. I understand that it's just, it comes down to metal. But at the end of the day, when you stick someone in a room with a robot that's interacting with them, they really can't help but interact with it as if it was something else, as if it was more alive. And that's really interesting from a social science perspective, right? It tells us something about how we as humans beha behave with things that we think seem sort of alive. We understand, we're very rational, um, we know they're machines, and yet we interact with them in ways that suggest we believe otherwise. And that's interesting, and it's something that we can design for. So a lot of the baggage that we come with as humans, especially as Westerners, comes from sci-fi, right? So robots in sci-fi tend to be either very scary and villainous or very cute and adorable. So say the Terminator and Wally. -E. Minimizing the intimidation factor is really hard. Because it's big, because it's capable, it can be intimidating. So we do tend to give it poses that are less intimidating. So we tend to like, you know, kind of fold the arms. Um, you don't see a lot of them running around like this because that would be intimidating. Like when they first designed the PR2 heads, um, they wanted to have a whole bunch of cameras stacked on top of its head and it looked like a tarantula. It's not that you want everyone to like run up and hug it, it's just that you don't want everyone to see it and run the other way. Robots are not as smart as the public seems to think they are. They're differently smart, they're not human smart, they don't have common sense, and that's okay, maybe someday they will, but if we can design them in a way in terms of the behavior and their looks that set expectations lower, then we have a chance of beating those expectations. If you make a robot's head tall and thin, people think it's the like egghead, it's smart, right? It's really intelligent, um, and that's not what we wanted. We wanted more of like the caveman head. If we can get more end users interacting with robots and using robots, I think we can learn a lot about both people and about the promise of robotic technology. So instead of us waiting around for fully autonomous robots, I think if we take those baby steps, starting with teleoperation or starting with, you know, just a joystick controller, let's see what we can get done now and how can we make these things useful for people today. Mm -hmm.